Talk, the show where you submit your topics using the hashtag Table Talk on Twitter. We throw them in the bowl, but forget about all that crap. We got George Watsky here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Back. George. Back with the boys. You're the best, dude. Uh, yes, yeah. thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. He says he's back. back because he was on tour. You want to tell us about it a little bit? Yes, tell us. What did I'll, you do? I was on Warp Tour. Pretty much consisted of rapping, standing out in the sun, and spending most of your time in porta potties. Sure. Oh man. I haven't crapped in a regular bathroom in two months <laughs> until last oh. night. <laughs> it's funny, like when you leave and the little things that get you excited when you come back, it's like, I can go to a 7 Eleven whenever I want to. <laughs> I can crap in a bathroom. I have privacy if I wanted to. I can jerk off right now <laughs> and not in a shower. I mean, to be fair, you can do that in a porta potty too. You can. You sure can. You can. But there's not a lot of space. I mean, if you're, you might be like touching door at yeah. that point. Yeah. You don't want to do door. that. That's that's a touching sex door. That's my favorite Cannon yeah. Crows album. <laughs> Seriously though, there are people because you really have like no privacy on Warped Tour ever, and some people start hooking up with each other, and like, I imagine there are people who probably. Have sex in the porta potties. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. But I can't imagine because mm -hmm. these are not just any porta potties. They're like a unique breed of foul. <laughs> because think about it. Think Wait, about do they like, bring the same porta potties from show to show? They or don't. They the travel on the back of the bus. <laughs> right. <laughs> the porta potties don't move from show to show. But, but the, the thing is, the people are moving from show to show, mm. and you can't crap on a tour bus bathroom. And mm -hmm. so that means that you have a hundred, the scale of Warped Tour is crazy. You have over a hundred tour buses moving from nine hours to the next city every day. So you guys day. caravan together. You caravan, a hundred tour buses are caravanning oh like hundreds of miles every night. So you get to your city at 7 a.m. and then you're there until like 11 p.m. Your bus driver is sleeping at a hotel. <laughs> He's on an, on an alternate sleep schedule mm -hmm. from you so that his morning is your night. And then you go to the next place and you can't crap on the tour bus bathroom, which means that when you pull up at seven in the morning, a hundred tour buses full of twelve people who all have to take a crap at the same time. It's the morning, man. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Is it can't crap because of mechanical issues, or there's a rule that everybody on the bus? It's a nine-hour trip. Well, I understand, Joe. but is, a, it, is it an unspoken rule that you a, can't crap? It's a spoken rule. A, oh, wow, it is yeah. a spoken rule. No, it's it's a spoken rule. I mean, like because it gums up the works. Like you, you someone oh, has to clean it out. Whoever's oh. sitting by the toilet just puts their arm in front, like, hey, man. Wait, wait, wait. You ain't going to crap in there. It's one or so is it a two? Is it's because one of one or those two? things where it's like, it's they because it's attached to a septic system on the bus. Yeah. And someone has to like drain that. Which is the tour bus driver. Okay, so but you just feel bad for the driver. Yeah, it's I mean, not that you're just stinking out the bus. No, and, but, and but he would ha have to literally go because he has to Haven't every time he pulls up Haven't you ever been on gas. a fucking bus where the toilet? It always oh, sure. stinks. Well, I mean, to, any like, toilet stinks. Scoop it out. And, like, it would be one person cleaning that, and it's just, you don't do it. Scoop. Like, if you do it. Do you, have you ever heard, like, a bus driver go, like, listen, man, I just want you to know it's real bad business when I got to clean shit out of this bus. <laughs> well, I will say this. <laughs> I have, a, I have a, one of a, my old bus drivers was a driver of a very iconic folk singer from the 60s who still tours, uh, who I will not name here, but oh, my parents man. were huge fans of. And it was a woman who was like, she's in her late 60s or 70s now, and uh, you know, came up to the bus driver one day and was like, Paul, I'm so sorry, you <laughs> gotta pull over. Like, I had to take a shit in the tour bus bathroom. <laughs> and it would be way more funny if I could tell you who it was. Stevie I'm makes, takes I'm massive dumps. I'm gonna whisper to you guys. <laughs> That's the best! <laughs> well, you can't do that. Anyone could sing. We you had can't to, do we that. Had to beep your whole song right yeah. now. Yeah. You can't. No! It's so great. Oh. <laughs> but you know, it's real. It gets real for men and women out there oh, on the road. Man. That becomes my lasting legacy is that I, like, I'm getting calls from her unofficial biographer. It's like, Did she really do that on the bus? <laughs> we need a quote from you. <laughs> Have to go on record. This big, this big, this big, this big. So, I can't see what you're doing with your hands, sir. You're on the other end of the phone. Corn, <laughs> fiber, how many proof? That's too many? But also, before we get into the meat of the show, th this is also a special day, too, right? Like, it is a also, special day. Why is that? Because my album comes out today. Oh, oh. Snap. So I'm here also to hawk the album a little bit and say, like, if you want it, you can get it right now. Uh, it's a labor of love. It's called All You Can Do. We worked on it super hard. 
And I don't know, I brought physical copies that I was gonna like parade around a little, but oh. I don't want it to seem like an infomercial. No, I wanna no, see. We want Where to are they? Like an infomercial. Oh, Please. How many yeah. tracks we got on that? 16. Oh. 16 tracks. This is what the vinyl is gonna look like. Oh, that looks so awesome. I love that you still do vinyl. I'll pass it around. And I actually brought a oh. gift for the source fed crew. No way. Who wants uh, a copy of the test pressing of the vinyl? Oh my god! Oh. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, I look, I, I don't wanna be the one that says I want this, but yeah. I have a record player that was handed down We're by have my. to do a drawing. Yeah. Now hold on a second. Let me just <laughs> you can, let me, you can explain say whatever you where want. your record let me, player let me came from and myself. why your record player is better than my record player. Let me pitch this, and then you guys can. Right. Now here's the thing. A lot of record players, even new ones that you buy these days, ruin records simply because the needle is not yeah, I use proper. I my dad from my dad's from the seventies. Okay, so, so <laughs> my father-in-law who passed away. Oh, don't no. no. Oh, oh, owned okay. a record store, you and fuck. he handed down his his mighty record player mm -hmm. that played first pressings of Beatles records, stuff oh. like that. I mean, that is what this deserves to be played on. All Just right. saying. Well, how about this? I'll give Steve the test pressing, but then I'll give regular copies of the record of, of the vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright, fine. It's, it's you got, got game. My dad on the front in 1971. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's Pops Watsky, <laughs> and that's Mom Watsky on the back, that's also 1971. Awesome. It's kind that's of a tribute awesome. to them. Yeah. And then wow. uh, this is the CD Deluxe. Wait, that's collection. not just you? No, this is my dad in that's 1971. That's not you. That, that's, you look just like your dad. I've been told I look more like my mom. It's a little bit of both. It's yeah. a combo. See, you're right in the middle. He's on that's the front, that's where you want to be. Watsky's in the middle. I love it. Wow, 16 yeah. meaty what? tracks. I, I know you can't. It's, uh, it's such a stupid question to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite track on it? Um, I have two favorite songs. One of them is called Let's Get High and Watch Play. Planet Earth, um, that I, which is exactly what it's about. It's about like it's a love song actually about like <laughs> about smoking weed with a person that you love and watching nature shows. <laughs> uh, Everyone's wow. gone through that phase, but it's, man. It's not even really a comedy song. It's just about like like feeling mortal with somebody that you love. Hey, you know? uh, when my wife was pregnant with our daughter, it was during when Planet Earth was huge, and yeah. we just sat on the couch together while she was in pain and <laughs> watched Planet Earth. So it's like a yeah. moving experience. Like, yeah. And, uh, and I have another song that's the final track that's uh, a poem, actually, that has Stephen Stills from Crosby, Stills, and Nash singing the hook on it. Oh, wow. And uh, for those of you that's who don't awesome. know, Young Kids, uh, he was also in a band called Buffalo Springfield and yeah. was like a super iconic singer. Mm -hmm. um, and so and you an know, amazing the, guitarist. Yeah, amazing guitarist. Um, he doesn't, unfortunately, play guitar, guitar in the song, but he does sing the chorus, and it's wow. like... It's a, a poem with a chorus on either end, and, and the reason that my mom and dad are on the cover is because it's kind of like a tribute. I wanted to connect the album to that period mm -hmm. in... So cool. Yeah, folk wow. music. Wow. Awesome. I mean, was it just a simple phone call, hey, or was it hard to get them on there? Actually, our, pho our photographer, Eleanor Stills, who travels with us, Eleanor Stills, Stephen Stills, it's uh, his daughter. So wow. Jeez. I did an um, autism benefit for him, and he returned the favor with a much bigger favor. And so we went in, we recorded it with him, and it was pretty amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. It sounds like the old days of the, of the like recording artists when like you know there would be this fantastic musician in the recording studio making an album, and then right across the way would be like Led Zeppelin mm -hmm. doing their thing, and then they'd and be like, "Hey man, want to come play guitar? Yeah, like, come hang out, just sit in on the session." Yeah, yeah. Well, wow. I really wanted him to play guitar on that track because it's like it's a seven minute song. It's the last track on the album, and it's got this jam session at the end that has a perfect spot for a guitar solo. But he was like, we had like our three takes with him, and then he was like, uh, all right, t good talking to you. And I, did, I didn't honestly have the nuts to go back and be like, uh, you mind taking one of those guitars off the wall? And, <laughs> oh man, yeah. but I mean, look, you got yeah, him. You got him. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. 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 We're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll hawk it again at the end. Yeah, and um, uh, you have a video that came out yep. today. Yep, never let it die. Lead single, blah blah blah. Let's uh, let's talk uh, a table talk. Or in the description. Yeah, clickety or... clickety clickety click. Yeah. yeah, it'll be everywhere. All right, Watsky, do the honors. Please pick the first topic yeah. out and read that, will you? And am I gonna launch it after? Yes, you get to, yes, you you get to launch it. You're an inaugural launch. Dude, what if Watsky makes it into the scorebook? It'll if be you tied on the first on the Trisha. first wow. try, you're supposed to try and hit the on camera. On the first try, you're supposed to hit the lens. But if you get through the the mic ring hole, you actually get three points. Okay, it's way more difficult. Oh, speaking before we go into this question, I want to also say that I. I'm pitching a new rule to the NBA if you're listening. Um, I think that the NBA is great, but it's gotten a little stale in past years, so I'm proposing that instead of just a two points for a regular shot, three points for a three-pointer, if you can slam dunk from the three-point line, you should be able to get 69 points. 
and it should be like kind of it's a really, game ending. Really like, guys, if you're like 40 <laughs> points behind in a yeah. game, it's not exciting anymore. And uh, <laughs> just make sure you have glass that will shatter any time yeah, yeah. someone does that. Think yeah. of how exciting yeah. that would be for like the end of a game. You're like, just to watch people you're try. 60 points yeah. down, and you have two seconds left on the clock, and somehow the rookie of the year summons the like <laughs> the fucking Space Jam arm. I was just gonna say, it kind of made me interested yeah. in basketball all of a sudden. Yeah. I was like, if that was a thing, Steve will watch. Steve will watch. Yeah, Adam so Silver ball went off the air. <laughs> and watching the this. Space if you want balls. my eyes, yeah. <laughs> you gotta that add happen. that into the NBA. All right, I got the question. Uh, Bailey Drew at Basil Drew Loves Twenty One asks, "Would you rather go 150 years in the past or 150 years in the future?" Hmm. Oh. Um, I mean, I'm gonna go future right off. The yeah, top. I think so too. Yeah, because I'm always like, I, I was thinking about like, man, if I died soon, I wouldn't get to see what the new iPhone is. Mm -hmm. Do I get to do this? Yeah. First? Yeah. yeah do well, it. I don't know, because like, it's so point, dude. You get a point. far in the past or so far in the future. Oh man, you're, yeah, your button's way too high, dude. Too it's going to go way yeah. too far. Yeah, put it there, you go, there you go. There you go. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh. Still way too far. It was on, it was on track, track, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Cause like here's the thing, 150 years. You go 150 years in the future, we probably re depleted all of our resources. Like maybe. the Earth might be a hellhole. That's true. But if you go back to what it would be 1864, step out of the time machine, get dysentery and die. <laughs> it's also a shit. Wait, hole. is that civil <laughs> war? Can yeah. we pinpoint exactly what? Oh yeah, is it civil war? How, it's how many? What's 100 exactly 150 years ago? Uh, so no, we're at two. So we're at 140. We're at uh, 1914. So then we're at 64. 1864. 1864. Yeah. Let me just uh, a quick Google. Is that yeah. like? Go to the Wikipedia. Go to the Wikipedia for 1864. By the way, uh, nothing in that comment says we can't take antibiotics with us and we can't take like. Yeah, but then you would change the future. Or my antibiotics with us. <laughs> it's, it's a really good Or gray area. <laughs> It's a gray area because, oh. like, if you're saying that you can't space. bring anything, then you can't bring your clothes. You're like, dropped, or you're like Terminator. Or you're oh, no, dropped you naked to... into yeah. this other world. Mm -hmm. We're assuming this, this is Terminator rules, right? Okay, yeah. sure. Why not? Um, so we can't bring. Like, it. with your knowledge, going to the past, you could maybe be like, uh, grow up to be king. You could, you could, you could set yourself in a, in a really good position. Civil war, civil Civil war is going on. Or you could on. take a musket ball to the freaking skull. You could save Abraham Lincoln. Right? Oh man, you would you have prior knowledge. Mm. But then you might Michael J. Fox yourself right, right. out of existence. Right. It, right out of existence. You also might things make things worse. Yeah. Because, you know, him getting killed might have spurred on all these other events and inspired all these great people to do things. So I think like our existence is, our existence should be about gaining as much knowledge as, oh, part yes. of our existence yeah. is, is gaining as much knowledge as we can and what we can see and what we can do with it. We've we we've, we've reaped what we can from the past. Sure. There's no reason to go back. Don't look back. Let's go to the future and 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 learn and, and right. see these things that we're never go like you said, and never going to experience. And also bring perspective from our time to the future when sure. I've probably cuz here's the thing. Once everything moves digital, if those computers crash one day, they could lose hundreds of years of knowledge. <laughs> but just imagine the time prejudice you're probably gonna experience. They're not gonna listen to you, they're gonna be like, shut up, pasty. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. The big, well, you don't even have a chip in your brain. <laughs> the million dollar question is, do you get to go back to the present time from that time that you've gone No, through? I think you're there. Yeah, I think so you're this stuck. Is, what oh, was you the, think we're there. Yeah, I think you're stuck. You're stuck. What was the movie that like the kids went back to the medieval times? A kid and, and key character story. So this, is, this, is, uh, this is basically this <laughs> question. This timeline with Paul Walker. <laughs> this question is a kid in King Arthur's court versus Futurama. And Bill and Ted. There you go. Yeah, versus, versus Futurama. Yeah, right. I would take Futurama any day. Because right. if you think about the past, too, it's like, I, like I'm used to my modern toilets and stuff. What were toilets like during the Civil War? You're the, holes. What, what, right? Yeah. Holes in the ground. Not as bad as Warped Tour, though. Not as bad as Warped Tour, because at least they don't have the fucking door and you're not stuck in a plastic box that's all hot. Oh. I mean, 150 years isn't, isn't so long that the future but, is something you need to be afraid of, but there's potential. Like, you could just show up and the planet's gone. The planet's like, gone. Foom, fuck! I always yeah. thought about that. I always thought about, Dead. like, in Back to the Future, if Marty and Doc are like, All right, Marty, we're going into 2015, let's oh, go! No, Doc. And then it's just, <laughs> come on, shut up, Marty, you idiot, let's go! You're a dumb brat, you annoy me! Why are you bringing let's me go. along? 88 miles, because I'm lonely! <laughs> and then they go back in time, and then they just end up in space, and he's just like, Oh shit, Marty, there's no oxygen in the fucking yeah. car! Uh, there's no friction, we're just gonna zoom off <laughs> into fuck space. Did Doc, Doc Brown just say fucking car? Yeah, fuck, no, I said there's no oxygen in the fucking car! <laughs> We all got for dying, Marty. Oh, yeah. fuck, Marty. Fuck, I love you, Marty. Oh, Doc. Oh, I miss you, Marty. <laughs> Shit, miss you. <laughs>
<laughs> it's also sketchy too. It's it's another thing that was brought up in Back to the Future too. If you go back to the past and you ever want to hook up with anyone, you're basically hooking up with people that are older than your grandparents. Mm. And so you got that weird sketchiness but in the back the, of your mind. At but, the same time, if you go back to 1864, they'll think you're a fucking wizard and people yeah, will but, throw but, themselves. Yeah, but 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 or also, burn you at the stake. <laughs> no, but you hey, leaves, you gotta think about it this way. Oh wait, buddy. I'm Jewish. I can't go back to the past. <laughs> yeah, not only that, dude, think about it this way, man. Yeah. I'm talking like you you heard a 70s bush? Mm -hmm. Yeah, think about 1900s Bush. I'm okay with 1800s Bush. No way, man. It goes all the way down to the knees. I'm okay with 1800s Bush. <laughs> 1800s Bush. I could go live inside 1800s Bush. Also, I think about Bush. that when I watch Game of Thrones. You're starting to get used to the accent now. <laughs> You're what was I watching? We were watching Game of Thrones, but what else were you watching? Oh, Ninja Turtles. We were talking about Ninja Turtles. <laughs> what? Thinking, Bush and Ninja Turtles? <laughs> right, because I was thinking, whenever I watch Turtle Game Bush? of Thrones, because there's all this fucking in Game of Thrones, right? Right. And I'm thinking, oh, this, and they're all just like smooth just, as babies. Yeah, they're smooth as babies. There's no hair anywhere. They had and, scissors in the 1800s. Well, but I mean, like, why? Do you think they cared about the bush? Like, the bush was probably nothing. They weren't I even mean, thinking about it. I mean, they, they wouldn't want it on the thighs, but, like, they would trim the bush. <laughs> but I mean, some people couldn't afford scissors. Mm. I don't. If I went back to 1864, I wouldn't have sex with someone who couldn't afford scissors. Well, this is what I'm, all I'm saying is, is all I can think of when watching Game of Thrones is that they Girl, you fine. They, <laughs> you own a pair of scissors? <laughs> pair of scissors? Yeah. All right, then we're gonna, we're, yeah, the, we're gonna have a good time. Oh, excuse me, you don't have scissors? Is that a luxury here? Yeah. Pardon me while I go on my merry way and invent electricity. Wait, so, but what I think of is like in Game of Thrones, they're all having sex and they're like, they probably smell awful. Like, everybody yeah. smells mm. awful. Like, There's no deodorant. Patchouli. It, yeah. No, not even patchouli. It's like real, just, just natural funk. It's just yeah. the genetic this, grossness. This circles back to our original conversation about having sex in the porta potties at Warp Tour. <laughs> <laughs> which is, are these, are these elements of disgusting natural funk a turn on for some people? Or are they not enough of a turn off? Yeah, well, yeah. I think some people, it's like They're a pheromone a thing. It's like, it's like that musk. That's just like. <laughs> this is why I have a boner every time I take a crap. <laughs> Hey, no, it's actually because when, when your stool comes through the okay. rectum, it stimulates right. the <laughs> Well, you know, because there's blood in the... In no, the, it just stimulates so, the here, prostate. Yeah. 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 Actually, no, I've you can take all the shots because you're only here today. At Ed T 49 er says, Is it possible to be dating someone without realize you're dating? Have you had similar experiences? So I guess it's... This is Dear Abby? Yeah. What is <laughs> a little Dear Abby. Um, I mean, are, are you hooking up? Like, are you making out? Like, if you are if you are just spending time with a person, there's no physical contact, I'd say well, you're not dating. This is what I feel like. It's one of those things right? where it's like, you're seeing someone, and, and, and this is something that is far beyond my knowledge, being married you know, forever and being with my wife since high school. But, uh, oh, you're man. You're bringing it down too far. Yeah, I'm I think learning you gotta, a lot. I think you gotta, yeah, you gotta do gonna, one of these, and I think you gotta, you gotta ease. Like, right there. You gotta, yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be an adjust, adjustment period. Yeah, you'll get it, you'll get it. You'll get it. Get it. Get it. Um, mm. But what I was saying is, is like, as far as I know, these days it's like you see someone a couple of times, you get a couple of drinks, you get some dinner or whatever. Yeah. You don't know if that's someone you're dating. You go out to a picture yet. show. You, yeah. go, you go to the Nickelodeon. Yeah, and it's like I don't know. You, you don't know if you're dating or not. I mean, when is it dating? When you both confirm it yeah, is. Yeah. When one of you says. When you use uh, your words. Yeah. When you use your words and say like, uh, "Hey, uh, I like you. I'd like to continue seeing you. Are we dating?" That's so it's like it. when you pin a girl in the 60s or something. Yeah. Mm. Like, bye bye birdie. <laughs> yeah, bye bye birdie. Hey, exactly. <laughs> we're dating now. <laughs> I don't want your pin. You get all my pins. You, I don't want this. What is this, Davy Jones? Uh, I, I stuck it, it on with horse glue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's, it it's, like, I feel like we all want to go into like depth on this, but there's really nowhere to go. Use it's a very words. vague question. Because yeah. like, I, I mean, I guess my question to the person who submitted it is, did someone tell you you two were dating and you had no for idea? 17 years. That well, means like, that's a crazy person. Let's Get like, out. Like I knew someone, so, so there was someone here in the office that had been seeing someone for a while and we were teasing that person going like, hey, so when are you guys getting married? And it was one of those things where it's like, oh, come on, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. And like, it's just someone I'm seeing. And it's one of those things where it's like, you, they may not even realize that they're heading into the dating zone. But mm. I mean, Joe's right. You just, th this probably brings out a, a whole other conversation of communicate with the fucking people you're with, you yeah. know? M communicate, open Be the direct. line of communication. Yeah. Yeah. Be direct with what you're looking for, what your needs and wants are from the start, before you even get like super involved, so you both know what you're walking into, when there's no investment. Right. Look, just so there's nothing unsaid in the next couple of weeks when we're hanging out, I want you to know what I'm looking for is dead ass. Mm. <laughs> that was an open communication, great there job, There are people Joe. who would respond to that. Great job. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's yeah. direct. People like a brazen approach. Mm -hmm. That's very good. 
I saw your genitals in the mirror while you were changing. I think I'd like to see them again. <laughs> and they'll be so taken aback, they'll be like, uh, now can you, you open the window there. so you can hear me better? You uh, would say, I saw your bush all the way down to your knees yeah, yeah. into and, it. Yeah, I just There's wanted to braid it. It's a construction yeah. site. Well, how about you and that ass? <laughs> I'm sorry, the mask I'm wearing is concealing yeah. who I am. Uh, uh, so let me say it again. <laughs> I just want you to know I want a touch door, I won't get a bone. <laughs> Mm. All right. Uh, Music Freak 903 on the Reddit asks, have you ever char- uh, have you ever changed your personality or anything about yourself Ooh, in order to please no. others? Yeah. Whew. Oh yeah. This might go into the zone, huh? Everyone does Everybody, it. Yeah. 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 But then you have to you... identify it when it happens and try and pull yourself back to yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like when I first started here at SourceFed, I I kind of like was holding back a little bit because I wasn't sure if I could fully be like as weird and as out there as I normally am. Mm-hmm. And so I was really testing the waters. I do that basically at any job I get. Like when I first started working at Sony, I was very quiet. I was very like, you know, hey, nice to meet you guys. It was nice to people. But then as soon as people started to become more comfortable and as soon as people started to respond to the kind of energy that I sent the out, the racist jokes, the racist start flowing. jokes started flowing out and, yeah. a, and a lot of the perversion. Just like the out. dick tattoos, the yeah. rubbing. I'm the massages. same way in every aspect, not just work. Like when I first meet people, uh, New situations, oh, jobs. You don't want to do a flat one. That's not going to go. <laughs> what do you mean? It, that, dude, that way. I fired a like flat that. one and I got it. Really? Yeah. This is here Cuddly Z gave it to me. I have to try it. <laughs> Cuddly Z. Click here to watch Cuddly Z. Uh, oh, that was close. Uh, right? Wow. Uh, wow. But yeah, like it takes me a, a long, not a long time, but a, a good amount of uh, hanging around with people until I fully open up. And, you know, like you said, start showing the jokey side and mm-hmm. the fun side and stuff like that. I don't know why that is. I've always just been guarded. I think you, but I don't even think it's it's guarded so much as, like, you're trying to gauge if people are going to accept it or not. And you're, yeah. you're trying to gauge if people are going to be okay with it, you know? like they, I hate Arnold. it, though. I hate it. Like, I love people that can walk into a room and they're just 100% themselves. Yeah. Right from the start. Like those, Matt Bowman? <laughs> yeah, Bowman. yeah. Those are also I the people them. that, like, the life of the parties, I guess is what we would call mm-hmm. them. They're the people that you gravitate to because they're also the people, because they're so honest with themselves, from what it seems, and they're so honest with their existence that you, they're enjoying life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the type of people you want to be around. <clears throat> for me, that's been, like, that's been a huge process because, I, I, I don't know, I didn't really like myself for a very long time. And, like, like, you guys know me. I'm not the most traditionally masculine dude. Mm. And, like, it really. In any way. <laughs> in any way whatsoever. In fact, I thought you were a girl your first day here. Yeah, well, that was the long hair. It was I had the to long trim hair. it. Yeah. yeah. We um, thought Meg still worked here for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Meg, what, you have a beard? Is this I'm a sorry, it's, Ma- it's Matt. What are you cosplaying as? It's Matt. Oh. 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 Meg. Are you cosplaying as Ross? <laughs> No, I have a pink, I have a piggyback story off of that <laughs> off of that discussion, but I want to let you finish your thought. Uh, well, just basically like I don't know. Now I don't give a shit. I know that I look completely ridiculous when I fucking dance. But today I was listening to this like Ariana Grande fucking Katy Perry mashup. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking well, care. Also, it was the delightful. older you get too, right? Mm-hmm. The yeah, you yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You have to come into your also, own. Because also more and more people come to know the real you and like you, and well, you realize, oh yeah, this is safe. Too. And also you have more freedom to move away from people who suck. Cause like when you're in school, you're stuck with those people for like well over 10 years. Like kids hated me from like kindergarten on and I knew those kids all the way until I left town, you know? And they were always shitty to me. So. Fuck those guys. Spe- yeah. This this reminds me what you said about Matt. Um, I was uh, at a bar in San Francisco, like I would say six or seven years ago. I just turned 21. And it was a place called Zeitgeist, which was this open patio seating bar where the tables were like cafeteria style and the average age of the people who went there was probably like 35 or 36. But it was like a queer biker bar in San Francisco where there was a lot of like people who were super left leaning, like radical politically, um, a lot of like gay, lesbian, trans people. And I was drinking there and this, it was like super crowded, outdoor dad, just turned 21. And this woman like two tables over starts making crazy eyes at me. And like, like she wants to bang me. Not like crazy eyes, but no, like, like, crazy, like crazy Like eyes. what's up, dead yeah, ass yeah, yeah. eyes. <laughs> and I'm like, Poor this doesn't guy. happen to me. Like what is going on here? <laughs> Why is this woman so into me? And how did I get so lucky? And she was just like, like, Oh yeah! You know, you know what I'm saying? It was perfect. crazy, and and I was like, there must be a mistake. You're looking at the person in the back of your head. And so I go over and I sit with her, and we start talking about poetry, and this conversation's going super well. And 
she starts rubbing my leg under the table and I'm like, what is happening here? And I feel like I'm being myself. Yeah. And she gets less and less excited over the course of the next like five minutes. She goes from like a 10, oh, like we're gonna no. go into the bathroom to like, this is not happening. Oh, and, and I'm like, no. what's going on here? Why are you like changing You're how- You're trying to figure she, it out. As I'm you trying know. to figure out what's happening. Uh, let me tell you what, what happened. Yeah. So she says, I, I have to tell you something. I don't know how to say this. This is a little bit awkward right now. Um, but when I first beckoned you over here to my table, I was under the impression that you were actually a trans man. Oh, <laughs> that, no. that you, oh. as a 21 year old male, were in fact a fully transitioned female to male transgender oh, person. No. <laughs> it was, we were in, oh, no. <laughs> this is, That's we were not in, what I thought. No. Oh, this is, this is a, <laughs> you thought you had it. I thought I had it. I was wrong. This is this is a curveball that catches decide. everybody <laughs> by surprise. And and you know only in San Francisco, you know, at this like Wait, bar. Where, so she's only attracted to trans. Well, I should say that even though she said I'm disappointed because you're not my wheelhouse sexually of what I'm into, <laughs> I said, well, you know, like maybe you, maybe you don't know completely what you're into, and maybe you were attracted to something about me, and maybe we should exchange numbers anyway. So I got her number. Look at you, man. And I had it in my phone for the next like six years, and I didn't text her once. Her name was Toggy. She was this Fijian, like, older woman. And, wow. and then like one New Year's ago, I had it in my phone, I was really drunk, and I was like, you dude, did. I should, I, well, I didn't do it, but ah. I was like, but I texted her, I was like, I was like, I should text Toggy and see what's up with her right now. And I texted her, and I was like, and like hey, dude. remember that guy who you thought was a transgender person six years ago? <laughs> 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 what's up? <laughs> what did she say? Did Radio she say silence. Oh, so, <laughs> so I'm guessing, oh, I'm guessing that she changed her number because who could resist a, a yeah. you mm -hmm. know? Wow. But, but anyway, so so the the end part of the story where it circles back to your original question is that there was a girl who I was hooking up with at the time, just like making out and like casually messing around with, and I told her this story like two weeks after it happened at the bar, and she was like, ha 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 ha. I'm not gonna hook up with you anymore because now I can't see you as anything other than a transgender person. Like, and she she felt that that sapped my masculinity. Wait, what? So she got it in her head. She saw it. Like as soon as she saw it, she couldn't. She was like, "Oh it. yeah, you, and, you you do look. You like. like have you never had that? Like where you're like looking at a woman, you're like, oh yeah, like she's so awesome, and then someone's like. No, dude, she has she, a penis. She has a penis. <laughs> so like, and then you can't unsee. Yeah, the but penis. she's still pretty hot. I mean, <laughs> the thing is, I, the thing is, she stopped hooking up with me, and then I realized, why would I want to be messing around with somebody who doesn't get yes. not only yeah. me, but my sense of humor? Because to me, that was the funniest uh -huh. fucking thing that <laughs> ever happened to me. I was like, look how funny this is. Right. And she was like, oh no, like, no, 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 so good riddance. You know, she girl, didn't know the real me. Don't waste your time with people who aren't going to want the same kind of life that you want and who don't fucking get you. And that girl right. takes stories too literally. She also thought a little girl broke into a house that bears lived in. <laughs> 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 Weird girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She also wow. thought that this goblin spun uh, straw into gold, and yeah. you know you could only <laughs> get rid of him if you said. Yeah, that. and also Watson, you could have let you could have let that really get to you, and you could have let that, that like you, you could have let it like be your a crutch for you for. But no. it sounds like even two weeks later you were like back in the game. You're yeah. like fuck it. No, it was he was right. in yeah. the game from the start. She I was like, was... I thought you were a lady, and that is now a man. And you were like, fuck it. Yeah, I'm a man. Let's do this. As, as it was happening, happening, as it was happening, I'm like, this is hilarious right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like That's you. Amazing. I am what I am, you know. Like mm -hmm. I, you can't, you can't change your stripes, and <laughs> you gotta at least laugh at it. Wow, that's um, good, man. What a story. All right, we got one more. All right. Uh, this is from uh, Downy Sins on the Reddit. Uh, they write, if in today's society we continued what? in the Egyptian tradition of burial with objects and live animals, etc., what would you have in your tomb? Steve Zaragoza. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd have me in your tomb? Alive. Cuddly Z. Aw, man. <laughs> you have the iPhone in there? Is there no, you'd have no food. It would just be so that you would haunt his That's tomb That's actually forever. pretty, it's a, it's a heavy-ish question, because you can answer with a bunch of jokes, but right. I think this, this will tell you a lot about your personality if you am answer it honestly, and your mm. passions. Well, yeah, because you could just be very like, oh man, I want all my stuff, I want my like my favorite toy in there, I want this, and it's, that seems very uh, material, you yeah. know? It's, it well, seems I mean, they were material. buried with animals in gold. And well, yeah, yeah. Burying yeah. yourself with a live animal seems cruel, you're like, 
cat, you're like killing a, you're basically <laughs> yeah, entombing, you. entombing a live beast. Yeah, they would just mummify the hell out of all their, yeah. their stuff when they passed. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you're not talking about like you're down there in the tomb and they just put your living cat in there to rot. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, they preserve it. They mummify it. They, they mummify kill the it first. By the way, I'm going like, like they pull the brains okay. out. Oh, look at oh, this. Football. Right. Paper football. Watsky. 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 I was just suggesting we played paper football for uh, source oh, fed plays. You guys are hyping me up so much. Get right there. Now. Oh! oh wow! So close. It was like a nice like though. arc there. It was, it was <laughs> graceful, but not on target. Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I just feel like um, I would probably want things that would be hilarious for archaeologists to find later. <laughs> right. I don't want really weird shit in there. Like uh, I don't know. Like, like that like, rabbit from this morning. The rabbit from this morning. Yeah. yeah. Inside joke. Or like uh, <laughs> like I want a standee of like. Lucy Lawless in there, and I want like a bunch of like VHS copies of like Dick Tracy, like just stacks and stacks of the old Warren Beatty yeah. Dick Tracy movie in there. You know, it's interesting <laughs> because I think like at different times in your life you would want different things in there. So for me, this is hard for me to answer because I guess my passions right now are like my family, but I don't want them in that tomb with me. <laughs> no. So, but like if I go back to 18 year old Joe. Man, I really want my baseball trophies with me and my track <laughs> shoes and maybe my letterman's jacket. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> with all my straight A pins. Yeah, let's put that in there with me. Mm -hmm. And then, but then like six year old or like even sixteen year old Joe's like, I want my pogs. Hashtag give us your give pogs. Give us your pogs. <laughs> Hashtag give us your pogs. We've gone on a whole thing. We want pogs. We want people and to send slammers. Us their pogs and Dude, slammers. slammers. Yeah, Did you, you ever want play the pogs? really thick yeah. slammers were the yeah. best. Yeah, man, those oh, are the yeah. ones that would the, flip them every time. The best one I ever had was a the tick slammer. No. Nice. Nice. Like this thick. It was a thick. Mm. Nice. You ever have the ones slammer? with the like the ratchets around the edge? They're, oh like, yeah. They're like kind of like ninja stars. stars. Did you have the pog maker? Oh, I, I, the pog I, maker where like you uh, you'd stick like a page from yeah. a magazine in, and then you yep. pop it. Oh man. It was the coolest. I would have made so many dirty pogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what elf pogs? You call it the reason. slam her. <laughs> why the elf? slam her? I know. Why were there yeah. so many um, elf pogs? What would I put? I you know I would just want I would want a big mural in in my tomb. Uh, that led people on some kind of wild goose oh, that's chase. Cool. It's like a treasure map right on right. the coffin. Right, and it's like you guys, you have to like open up my body and dissect it to get the key, <laughs> and there's just nothing fucking. I in like there. the idea of having it on the coffin, and then they go on this elaborate like over seven continents <laughs> goose chase back to your coffin. It goes back to the coffin. And they open it, and it's just you like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wait a minute! I there, but see... I'm also grabbing my dick. So <laughs> <laughs> and it's golden. Yeah. No, I, they, I, that's funny that you mentioned that because the dick the, is golden. Yeah, it's a golden mm. dick. That makes sense. Uh, and then they're like, "Oh, well, at least he's, there's a golden dick. We can go and exchange." No, for like don't grab bucks. it. <laughs> Beware of the curse of the golden <laughs> dick. Like, what's gonna happen yeah. here? Huh? Oh, oh, my dick's going gold too. <laughs> no, but like, uh, it's what? like a Midas touch dick <laughs> Midas from touch Aladdin dick. three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> I want to see like in a movie that happen. I want to see like a big like epic adventure movie, and it's like you know maybe it's like a Goonies type thing, and the kids are following the map, and it just leads them directly back to where they started, and the whole movie's like, guys, the real treasure was our friendships. <laughs> Fuck you, Jake. No, that's <laughs> I wanted fun. gold. That's no fun. <laughs> My dad financed this thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that bike you fucking yeah. went off a cliff on? Yeah, that yeah. one was uh, well, like. What would you put in your in your tomb, man? Did you say? Put me in a fucking burlap sack. Throw me into the ocean, man. I'm, I'm not. I'm going like just cremate. Yeah. Me. So just mm -hmm. fuck it. Like the least amount of like work on your on on the on Dude, the party. Throw of it. Around. Throw a huge party at my funeral and then just toss me in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. You know my. Uh, my well, we liked him. Yeah. <laughs> my father. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Thanks for all the music. <laughs> my father-in-law used to say, "Turn off that fucking Watsky track. I never liked that shit." <laughs> God, now that he's dead, I can finally say. Oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't want them playing. I don't want them playing my music at my funeral. I want them playing like Mariah Carey instead. <laughs> I was the my baby. I was going for next question. May I? Yeah, yeah do, do it. it. Wait, that's Whitney. Is that Whitney? You got me feeling emotion. emotion. Deeper yeah. than I've ever yeah. been before. Yeah. They were the same person back in the day. We got Cosmic Doritos wants to know what is one weird childish ritual or habit you still do to this day while getting ready in the morning? Mine is sliding down the steps in a padded sleeping bag before making breakfast. That's great. I am 21 and I've been doing this since I was five. Good for you! That's great! Yeah! yeah I stopped doing that at about 15 and that was stupid. <laughs> God, it's so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, 
I get, this isn't really a ritual, but like I still lift my shirt up as high as it can go when I pee. Like when I go to pee. <laughs> you know, like when you're a kid, you like lift your shirt up. Wait, wait, yeah. Do you do it in the public urinal? Like, no, 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 like no. This? <laughs> <laughs> no, the real kid move is to pull your pants all the way down to your yeah. ankles. Yeah. That's your shirt the shirt all the way up. The urinal, but I like to, I hold the t-shirt in my <laughs> mouth and I pee. <laughs> Oh. You remember when kids used to chew on the the ring of their? Yeah, yeah. So they'd have to chew there was the... that one kid who had the like weird chewed on collar all dude, the time. I was worse. I had a That's rat called tail. called anxiety. I had like yeah, eight, you did. I had an eight or nine inch rat tail. Oh. Instead of my shirt collar, I used to wrap it around to the front and of my mouth on. and just chew. Oh, on it. <laughs> Got to like dip it in like flaming hot Cheetos powder so it has something, something good to suck on. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, so I'm getting worse. I lost my touch. Dude, it was that one that I folded up for you. That, that was got the one. Yeah. This is perfect. Wait, what the hell were we talking Child about? Childish, Childish thing things. that you still do, rituals. I still, when I do laundry, uh, for whatever reason, I've always done this. I count down from twenty to zero when I'm taking the laundry and putting it in from the dryer or from the washer to the dryer. And I do this like weird, like I go in half. So I'll count down from twenty to zero, and then ten to zero, and then five to zero, and then two to two to zero, and then one to zero. And my goal is to mm. get them all into the washer. That's kind of fun. By the time I'm done. I can't not do it. It's just mentally in there. I'm not doing it out loud. It's just like oh, it's like a little bit of fuck, I'm at the tens. <laughs> oh the fives <laughs> fucking sucks. <laughs> that's funny. So that's a weird thing that I do. Um, yeah, I got one. I mean like when I get into a bed, when I get into bed and it's like new sheets, like clean sheets, I like just rub my feet all over them. <laughs> I just stretch the feet out, and I'm just like, I just want the texture. I want as much of it as possible. Yeah. You want so all I'm the like, new on you. Mm, I just give me all that new. I get into the bed. Yeah. I stretch out and I just shit my. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh man, I'm sure I do have one of those things. I can't think of it right now. Is it boner related? Um, I didn't have boners until I was like four or five. Yeah, that was is supposed that, to be a joke. Is that late? <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't hit puberty at yeah. four or five. Scientists were baffled. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I started collecting boners. Yeah. yeah. You know what I will say? This is not. That's a childish... what I want in my tomb is my boner collection. <laughs> this isn't a childish ritual or, or habit, but rem reminding of my first boner ever. The first thing that I ever got turned on by was a copy of the Oriental Trading Magazine that we got at our house, which were these old magazines. Yeah, with like the it. glow sticks yeah, and like, like, it's like just like the, 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 toys the stuff yeah. that they hand out at bar mitzvahs. But there was one item in the Oriental Trading catalog that we got, and I think I was probably like 12 or 13, that was like a big novelty t-shirt that, that made it look like you were wearing a bikini. So it was like a woman's naked body with a bikini and a bikini bottom, and it goes down to your knees. And I was like, whoa. Like, I'm, I'm gonna borrow this magazine. A little bit. <laughs> Whoa, but why? I don't know. And then I turned to the next page and got turned on by like bulk Jolly Ranchers. That's when you realize that everything yeah. turns you on. Yeah. What a great! Oh, man, Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous that he remembers the first thing that I know. Turned on. I could never do. I Damn, could never think of anything. Memory. I don't remember what turned me on. I think I remember. I remember the first time I noticed. I had a boner and I couldn't <laughs> figure out what the fuck it was. Dude, I can't Im I can't come you anywhere can't close remember to remember that? anything like that. But I remember being attracted to the chipette with the glasses. Oh and yeah, the and the chipmunks. See, that's the thing. She mm. was like the one who was like super like uptight, but then yeah, yeah, yeah. you know she was. But the she freak was just so sheets. cute. She had the glasses and Janine? the hair and everything. Yeah, Janine. Yeah, Janine. 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 Janine was yeah, yeah. the freak. I like Janine too Brittany, from Ghostbusters. Brittany, yeah. Jeanette, and Janine, Janine too. Yeah, also glasses. The, the girl Theodore. Really nice. Yeah, girl, girl Theodore. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Janine. Oh, shit, Jeanette. And girl Theodore. And girl Theodore. Yeah. I don't think she'd appreciate Do you remember your first boner, Joe? No, I no. don't. I remember my first crush. I, the only time I, I, felt, I legitimately crush. fell in love at first sight, it's like something I never believed mm -hmm. in after this, because it never happened again, is in kindergarten. I saw a girl, and I have- It's kindergarten. Was, That's when it happens. I was Twitter-pated yeah. for like years. And then what was I, her name? Uh, Jordan. Jordan, uh, which I th also thought was cool because of Michael Jordan. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jordan. He's just like Michael Jordan. <laughs> we don't need to do last names. <laughs> She went to a different name. school forever, and then she came back in seventh grade. Oh, Ooh, shit. And then did all those old feelings no, from Russian wait, this is like Things were different. What happened, yeah. Joe? I fell in love with another girl that could do a backflip. Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Good criteria. <laughs> oh, shit, that girl did a backflip? I'm in love. Uh, and she played baseball? Fuck. 
Well, yeah. That was enough for you. Hey, huh? man. That's a double Dude, turn. I'm sold. Yeah. What's she up to these days? Yeah. My criteria was. Are you still friends with her on Facebook? <laughs> Seventh grade backflip girl? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And she, her, her avatar is just a gif of her doing backflips. <laughs> and do you ever, honestly, ever, like, once in a blue moon, kind of, like, go back and check on what she's up to? And... No, those crushes ended a long, 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 long time ago. I'm long just going to say, even though it's, like, a little mean. So, like, my first crush, uh, her name's. Wait. Well, no, her name's Erica. Uh, and uh, she was like super tall and like athletic and like uh, she was just taller than any of us in kindergarten and then she kind of like tore me a new asshole when she moved away and was just basically like you're disgusting I hate oh, you no. like in front of a bunch of people and then she's fat now oh snap she's fat and I was and really got a lot skinnier. I got a lot skinnier I was really fat when I was a kid so Buy when the stock Vindicate. is low, <laughs> yeah. sell high. You never know, man. You <laughs> never know. You just and never know. Never know. I had a Do girl, you, Erica. Uh, <laughs> Do you, Erica? Do you. I, there was this girl that I knew when I was like maybe second grade, first grade or something, <laughs> and her name was Ada. And she was like, one day she just came up to me and was like, you're my boyfriend. And then she would like walk See, around. communication. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's how you know you're dating. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? And I was like really scared. And then, and it, cause I guess she was like, she would kind of been like, you know how girls tease boys, they pull their hair and they like yeah. tug on their shirts and shit. She'd been doing that for a while. And then finally she was like, you're my boyfriend. We'd walk around the, the, the <laughs> school. And then I was like, one day we were like hanging out in the, in the, like the play yard. And like, I pull out my backpack and I got my Ghostbusters toys. And I was like, okay, you're gonna be, um, you're gonna be Egon, or no, I was Egon always, sorry. I'm gonna be Egon and you're gonna be. <laughs> you're gonna be Ray. <laughs> you're gonna be Ray. Oh, and that's such an insult to be And then she was like, Ray she was like, wait a minute, you got toys? Like, I'm out of here. She's like, you're too weird. Wait, how old were you? We were like in second grade or something. That's uh, not weird at all. The <laughs> first or second you grade. Got rid of somebody who wasn't as cool as you. Yeah, exactly. I was she like, didn't what? understand you. I was okay. like, girl, you don't even know, man. When I'm like 30, these are gonna be worth like eight bucks. I'm gonna be on YouTube. I'm gonna be talking about your ass. I don't even know where you are. I don't care about you, Ada. So you're not Facebook friends with Ada still? No, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you her last name if I yeah. wanted to. Clock. Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. <laughs> I'll be here all day, folks. <laughs> ah, all right, well, on that note, what a great table talk. Uh, holy shit. Thank you so much, George Boyd, yeah, for joining George. us. My it's pleasure. always a pleasure. And tell us everything once again. Show us all your cool the stuff. Albums. Albums. Please. All, okay, all I was you gonna can whip do. my dick out. But yeah. <laughs> I have my album. It came out today. I'm really, really proud of it. Um, we worked on it. And we're going on a club tour. We're announcing all the dates for the club tour today, too, and you can buy them. So I'm coming to like Australia, US. Uh, Europe, I'm Shit. going, and all of them are announced and on sale right now at my website, georgewatsky.com. Have you been to stay. Australia? No, this is our first time. We really had to work very hard to book these dates, and we're playing like seven shows over there, and wow. with the full band, and playing, I can't remember, like 40 something shows in the US, 14 in Europe in September. That's so. great, man. Holy shit. Yes. Congratulations. Um, awesome. Thank you, I'm really proud of it. The Whatever, I, I'm, I have like too many things to promote, so I'll just say I have a lot of shit that came out and happened today, so if you're interested in any of it, go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash gwatsky, or my website, georgewatsky.com. And all of this will be in the description. Too. Yeah, and more. Yeah. Everything or will be there. Yeah. If you're not interested in it, then thank you for hanging out with us Aww. and letting me be a part of Table Talk. I feel like I'm like extended family at this point. Of course you are, man. You're part of the family, of course you are. You are. Yeah. We want you to have this. We bowl. need to borrow some Thank money. Thank you. <laughs> we need to borrow. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's the bowl for you. It's like a Pokemon ball yamaka. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Put it well, on. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to include topics on the show, the regular show, you can use the hashtag Table Talk on the Twitter, or you can go to Reddit r slash SourceFed and find the appropriate thread for all things mm. Table Talk. I'm Steve Zaragoza, aka Cuddly Z. Mm. I'm Matt Lieberman. Joe Beretta and Joe Barsky. <laughs>